So, my name is Helmut Spicer and we're going to talk about spray coverage and travel speed. Uh, we did something similar a, a number of years ago, likely 10 years ago. We had two machines because farmers don't believe that that will go 6 miles an hour and the people that drive those machines don't think that a travel trail sprayer can go 12 miles an hour. But we're going to do it with one machine today. We're going to spray 10 gallons per acre, 6 miles an hour going that way, 12 miles an hour on the return pass. We've got it nozzled, so we've got a flat fan nozzle close by the wheel. We've got an air induction nozzle out the, at the outer wing. The flat fan nozzles are turbo T-Jets, which is a, a wide angle flat fan. And for the low pressure, or sorry, the low speed run, we've got an air mix, 11002. For the high speed run, we've got a T-Jet air induction, 04. Okay. Now, sprayers have evolved over time. Uh, once upon a time, we had trail sprayers and very few of the high clearance machines. Um, what's the spraying, who sprays here? Anybody? What's your speed, Steve? I go pretty slow. I'm like five, six mile an hour. And it's a trail sprayer there. Trail sprayer. Okay. A hard and that's sort of, you're in two camps. If you're spraying slow, you're using a trail sprayer. If you go higher speeds, you're likely using a high clearance machine. And it's really a function of staying in the seat. If Steve was to go 12 miles an hour across the field... That's not enjoyable. <laughs> no, air ride seat or not. You're using the whole cab or whatever. Okay. This thing uh, can move across the field very nicely. Beautiful suspension systems on them. I can hit a pothole like that at 12 miles an hour. You just feel a little tick on the wheel and you go, what was that? And, and everything rides uh, very, very smoothly. The other thing that's really improved is the uh, the boom design and the boom suspension back uh, luckily 20 years ago we went to you know once upon a time we had things like the golden arrow sprayer back at the farm right high-tech boom a piece of pipe <laughs> and a chain mm -hmm. okay and then if you drove three four five miles an hour it kind of did this if you went a little faster the field was rougher it did this and then one field i was spraying i remember uh, i was driving and it was ruts or something like that and then for some reason i had to go crossways and it was so rough that this boom flipped up and locked in behind. <laughs> I didn't know it would do that, but that was interesting. But still sprayed, right? Still spraying up like this. And of course, my dad's watching, so that didn't help the cause. But anyway, uh, so we've got better boom designs. We've gone to, to trapezoidal suspension systems that basically are the, an energy dissipation system. Lose energy, take the bounce out, whatever. And uh, they, they work by shift, allowing the boom to shift sideways. There's a transport pin in those. And I bet you I can go eight farms out of 10 that have that system, that pin's never been taken out. So as they drive across the field, there's no way to lose energy except this. And then we start to get wear, wear points, we start to get fractures, we gotta re-weld it, whatever the case may be. So of course, if booms break, farmer talks to the manufacturer, the sprayer uh, dealer and says, we need a better boom. So the companies do beef up the booms and we've gone to basically sort of a box truss affair like we have there on the John Deere. Uh, folds, it carries, it doesn't bend, it doesn't break uh, very often. But to test them they send them to Australia. We we think we're, we're spraying at a good clip at 12 to 14 miles per hour. Western Canada it's 18, Australia 25. So we send the boom over there if it survives then it'll do here. Okay, it'll, it'll work for us there. So between the two systems, whether we're spraying 6 miles an hour or 12 miles an hour, what's the difference from a droplet perspective as it's exiting the tip? Between those traveling slow, traveling fast? Shear. Shear? In other words, there's more, the faster we go, the more air is, is hitting that uh, spray, the droplets and the spray pattern. What's it doing? What's it doing, Steve? Probably fracturing some droplets and making them smaller. Yeah, 5 to 12 miles an hour, not so much. 60 miles an hour is in a helicopter, or 100 miles an hour in an aircraft. Then we we actually use shear. We can adjust. By, if we spray downward on the back of a fixed wing aircraft, we can re significantly reduce the droplet size. And they do that depending on the application that they're doing. What else is different? So we may affect droplet size. What else is different? Slow versus fast speed. Drifting. Drifting. Lifting? No, drifting. 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 In what regard? Falling goes <clears throat> falling, you go faster, you might drift 
Well, you can see as I go by and, and, and evaluate that. I don't think it's it's a, a big a big concern. Oh, people say, well, if you go fast, that's why the bridge problem. You know, that's why we injured the tomatoes next door, or whatever the case may be. Something else, very basic. Forward velocity on. Large Forward velocity. Points. Okay, what? Yeah. So, if we go six miles an hour, we're basically dragging the spray plumes, which are my fingers, through the air. Twelve miles an hour, we're dragging them quicker through the air. The air hitting that spray plume, does it go through or does it go around? <coughs> Remember, is that spray plume, that triangular spray plume, porous or solid to wind? I think solid. It's solid. Good guess, you're right. Air will not go through, even though it's ribbons of water changing to droplets of water. You can see through it, air will not go through it. Because as you spray droplets into air, air being a fluid, it pulls in air and it sort of does a little air curtain on each nozzle, okay? <clears throat> as the uh, you drag this through the air, the air can't go through the pattern, it has to go around. So it goes over this edge and this edge, picks up the real fine droplets up near the top, collects them and keeps them in two vortices. So there's 54 nozzles on that machine. There's 188 vortices generated when that machine goes through the field. The faster we go, the more intense the vortices are. They did work in uh, England, and five minutes in a calm day, on a calm day, five minutes after the machine went, the vortices were still rolling in the field. So, do those vortices work for us or against us? <coughs> for. For us. What do they do for, Steve? You can actually put droplets up on the bottom sides of leaves. Okay. The droplets that are going to attach on the bottom side of the leaf are very small. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they are buoyant in air. They float in air. So the only thing that's going to get them on the underleaf surface is upward moving air. So you've got these, these two vortices like this on each nozzle. Faster we go, the more intense those vortices are. Okay. When we get a lot of wind, the vortices are going to be disturbed, broken up, deflected, whatever, and they won't last five minutes. They may last uh, 20, 20 seconds or thereabouts. Okay? So those vortices actually work for us to get, uh, get coverage on underleaf surface. And for some insecticides, some fungicides, we need that to get total plant protection. Um, okay, yesterday morning, one mile per hour wind speed, 80% relative humidity. Is that a good time to spray? So almost calm, 80% relative humidity. Spray, no spray. Spray? Sure. And the reason is high humidity, droplets aren't gonna evaporate? That and if it's no wind. If no wind, wind they're wind, not wind, leaving. Wind is spray when you can. Okay. How many people agree with Reg? One, you got one convert, Rich. And the rest of you? Don't know? Steve? It's the worst. Steve says it's the worst. Okay, let's figure it out. Remember that small droplets, the really, really fine ones that are drift prone, are buoyant in air after they leave the tip. So as you're driving across this field spraying, the big droplets go down where you send them, the little droplets hang in the air. There's no wind. So after you spray, where are they? In a big pancake over that field, right? High humidity. Are they going to live a long life or are they going to dry up? Live a long life. So you finish spraying, Reg. There's no wind. High humidity. Is there drift? No, because there's no wind, right? You go home. Life is good. Then the wind comes up. Then the wind picks up or the temperature goes up and it's sort of a blanket of death, I call it. <laughs> and it moves like a blanket across the landscape and it'll go kilometers. And there's still active droplets because it's high humidity. So the new product labels will not only have maximum wind speeds, they'll also have minimum wind speeds to eliminate that situation. And the minimum will not be zero. Okay, so high humidity, dead calm, bad news. Okay, you will get yourself into big trouble very, very quickly. Okay.
Let's do some uh, runs with the machine. So we need uh, four volunteers. Small group, we'll just be able to take care about everybody. Reg, thank sure. you. Come on down. There's two flags out there. Yellow side up. Yellow side up. You follow Reg, and after the machine goes, you go bring them back, okay? I'm gonna need some for the 12 mile an hour. Oh, we'll just take the front row, how's that? That's good. And again, after the machine goes by, and I'm down there, turn around, and you put those out for the next run, okay? But you have to duck your head so the boom doesn't hit you? No, or? no, they have to come back to the tent. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they don't hold it? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's safety people. Who has never operated a wind meter? Okay, you're perfectly qualified. Come on up here. You're supposed you just to read the number? No. And remember the number. That's as tough as it gets, I'm sorry. You want the book? <laughs> and we're going to do temperature. Emily, can you do that for us, please? <clears throat> Flat fan, air induction? You're the far one? Far one, yeah. Okay. So flat fan, air induction. Maybe hold them up so the gang can see. At those conditions, two point whatever miles per hour, 28 degrees. Mm -hmm. That was the further one. 12 mile an hour, air induction, flat, flat fan. fan. So six mile an hour on the inside, 12 miles an hour on the outside. All 10 gallons per acre. What do you think? Derek? Slower looks better. Okay, well, what about faster? Does it look that bad? Same no, average, no, no. just bigger droplets. Yeah. Well, if you buy water sensitive paper, you get the handy dandy counting guide. Cool. Yeah, well, it's just it's three holes and a bunch of words on the back. It says you need 30 to 40 droplets per square centimeter, and every droplet counts. How are we doing? Are we there? 30 to 40, have you got it? Easy. Okay. 30 to 40. More yeah. Oh yeah. Roger? 33. 33, okay. <laughs> so they all have <clears throat> adequate coverage to get control and 30 to 40 droplets is for contact herbicides. Hmm. So if you're making the, the, the deal that you can get the same coverage going faster, right? Yes. And why aren't the vegetable guys driving that fast when they spray with machines like that? Luckily, they don't have enough pump, because those guys usually do 30 to 40 gallons of water per acre. Yeah, but they could still go all the way yeah. Yeah, but the pump only yeah, kicks out so true. many gallons, right? So that's that's likely the limiting factor, is that that pump, first of all, they're limited to about 100 pounds, because it's a centrifugal pump, and likely the standard pump on those likely can't do 12 miles an hour at 30 gallons of water per acre. Okay, that's likely their limiting factor. Well, is nine's the, yeah. about what I could get with 28. Nine? 30, 30, 35 with my valve wide open. Oh, back. okay, okay. Because you open the valve yep. all the way. Yep. 
So what was it? So nine mile an hour, yeah. 30 gallons. So 30, 35, that's pretty long. Well. Here you go. Okay, so he could do nine. With streamers, obviously. I don't know, I just don't. But we've got guys that are using those machines to do vegetables. I, they, I never asked them no, how fast they're going. No, I know, I know. So, but it's likely a function of the pump rather than the, yeah. the coverage. <laughs> okay, questions, comments? And you were at what pressure there though? 50. Yeah. Comment, spray fast, get her done. <laughs> And if the guy says, well, do you think you're going to, you're doing a good job when you're driving that fast, Sonny? What do you tell him? Because one of the custom applicators this morning said, tell him to take a pill. I said, you don't, but yeah, some people need to be told that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to know the grower fairly well. <laughs> the, uh, you know, we talk about boom clean and I've spoken about this at, at numerous meetings. We used that exact machine to go out to do some videotaping last week. So. Mark Monman had been spraying Roundup and he cleaned out the boom and life was good. We're going to go, uh, it's fine. So we filled the clean water tank. We went out to shoot a videotape. We sprayed a two passes up and down a field in Highgate with clean water. Then we went to tomato grower and we just needed to go about 300 feet to get a shot of the sprayer, the spray and the neighbor's house as sort of the setup. So I started the sprayer. I went 100 feet, stopped. The actor changed positions and we started again. The grower was in two days later. He said, were you spraying Roundup? I said, no, clean water. He says, you should go have a look at the field. The tomatoes are dead. No. Starts out six feet of depth, feathers down to nothing in 100 feet. Then of course we stopped. Starts again six feet and goes 300 feet. And they're gonna be crispy like tomorrow. Like dead, dead, dead. He's happy. He's not terribly upset, but I'm, Surprise, <laughs> shall we say? It's a learning experience. It's a learning experience, right. One boom section back had something in it. Yeah, I know, we're, and it's right by the road. Yeah. You can see it. And so. there's a Ridgestone College sign. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sprayed by. by. <laughs> yeah, sprayed by helmet. <laughs> Inputs brought to yeah, you Yeah, that's by. not, you know, it's not the edge, it's in part, anyway, so. It's a good thing we didn't have the whole boom on. So that's a little, yeah, it's a learning experience. Okay, any questions? The other thing I forgot to mention when we talked about spraying in calm conditions. New product labels as they're reviewed and updated will not only have maximum wind speeds, we're also going to see minimum wind speeds under which you can spray. And zero will not be the number. So it's got to have some wind, you can't have too much wind uh, to sort of spray according to the label. Okay, no questions? Thank you very much.